thing and it's going to take you know it's going to take some of them now it's not going to be all of them because that's just what it is but it's going to take some of the uh, white americans in power to be that helping hand and you know i always tell uh people of color uh black hispanic that if you want to make your people great you have to do it yourself don't depend on anyone else but eventually someone may say hey you know what i have this power i have this wealth i want to be a helping hand so white america just open your eyes and realize the wrongs of the entire history of this country you know some people try to brush away the um the the past uh, horrors of this country where it's like no this is where it comes from it's, don't think that it's brand new like it comes from something so that'll be my rant right there yeah my mine kind of almost piggybacking off that is like this racism this is learned within our homes yeah this, this isn't learned and then within our societies this isn't this is not things that we're seeing on TV and everything we're seeing this at home so moms dads Step up to the plate, really start teaching our kids, our youth, our our brothers and sisters of all colors, races, and creed from all around the world, and start spreading some love. It's it's we've been hearing it. It's it's is hate is not going to beat this. It's it's love. We're going to have to. Um, we're 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 angry in all sorts, and that's that's the problem right now. Is the anger towards each other and we need to learn to love we need to learn to forgive and we need to accept and that's the only way that we're going to make our country as great as it's possibly ever going to be so forgive don't forget and love each other and that's the only way we can get through this and because it's not just about one side one ideology one religion because that's what we put on paper 200 whatever years ago now that we have a freedom religion we have a freedom right and this and we are going we have we have to accept each other because we can and we should so there's a lot of things that we have to do but hate is not going to do it because you think different is not going to do it. It's okay to be different. It's okay to have a different thought. It's okay to be Republican. It's okay to be liberal. It's okay to be neither. There's not one way or the other. The American way is to get in a room, work together, come together for the common good. And right now, the common good is for our lives of everybody. So hug your neighbor, love your neighbor. And remember that everybody is neighbors. That's all I got. Cool, cool. That was that was wonderful. Great. Um, again, shout out to Pete. You know, glad you and your family doing good. You're all in our prayer. We're, yeah, yeah. You're all in our prayers. And um, yeah, man. I I just want to say with with everything that's been going on, because honestly, police brutality, like. White supremacists going crazy or in the muck. Like, that's always been a thing. And personally, if I had a couple of solutions, I could think of one off top. White people just shouldn't be allowed to be cops. Like, that would solve a lot of problems. Uh, you wouldn't see people getting pulled over saying, hey, where are your papers at? Are you from this country or not? Because they look a little bit Latin. Or, hey... You know, we're, we're not going to pull this black man out of his car and beat him to death and kill him in front of his family. Because I'm sorry, when it comes to police unions and these prosecutors and these police departments, the Fraternal Order of Police, most of them, like 90% of them, especially when we're talking about leadership and people who who are supposed to be at the forehead and the figure front of things, they're all white. So maybe they shouldn't be allowed to have those positions anymore. Because I'm sorry, I just don't see where there's a history of white police officers just out here being the the Boy Scouts of the world. No, they're like every other day, like there's corruption with police. And we find out all these police officers who all happen to be white, who all happen to be getting away with killing people and beating people up. One dude, a former Boston, I read a story on CNN, a former Boston um, police chief. He was also 
like the head of a a police union, he got busted for child pornography. Like we don't police the police, and now we live in a country where police are seen as the law, the judge, the jury, and the executioner. And if your family wants to fight over what happened to you after you die, uh, you get or you survive and you're crippled, you're handcuffed to your hospital bed. You're seen as the transgressor, even if you didn't do anything wrong. And we could point a lot of that, that, well, most of the cops are white. So if you start there and look at the racial animus and say, maybe we need to take you out of these roles and positions and put people who look like the people who live in the neighborhood you're policing, then you might see some change. And, yeah, that's just that's just one way to look at it. But, um... Yeah, man, it, it's been a crazy week. Uh, it won't. This show won't always get so dark and gloomy, but we got to be honest about you know what's going on in the real world. We can't not talk about it. So, if this finds you and it hits you a certain way, then you know, let it hit you a certain way. But think about why it hits you a certain way. Cause yeah, we're three guys on the radio, but. We also have experiences, life experiences that we deal with. We've seen things. Like, Eric just straight up said, I have to renounce my hero now. Earl Acker, who, Hall of Fame linebacker, came out and said some really racist, dumb, and sensitive shit. But, at the end of the day, to quote Pete, yes, I just said at the end of the day, I stole your mind, Pete. (laughs) Sorry. I. (laughs) It's done now. But anyway... Yeah, man. Touchdowns and tangents. It is what it is. We got, what, like five episodes to the 200th episode? Four after this. Yeah. Got to get that bingo. Oh, yeah. So, um, thank y'all for listening. I think I'm going to have to Uber here that night. Yeah. Probably going to Uber back, too. Just catch up. (laughs) We can't do a pool anymore. But just make sure everybody's Uber comes at the same time. Right. But, yeah, man. Touchdowns and tangents. I'm Kenneth Berry, a.k.a. Oso Grande. Salute to Pete. Salute to the family, everybody out there, everybody's family. Uh, y'all stay safe out there. Um, barely a tangent. Monday, coming up, another episode. It's going to be interesting. Stay tuned. Spread- Michael, Eric, Alan in the back, holding down videography. It's been real, guys. It's been real. It's fun. Right been a real one. Spread that love, people. Spread the love. Stop Eskimo broing in a time of COVID. That's just wild, bro. Like, who would that? Chill out on the Eskimo broing. Shout out to Snodgrass and RIP Stovepiper. I miss that bar. That's-